listen, I was thinking about it, and uh, perfect dark zero. You just remove anything boring or you know intolerably like as like authoritative if there's anything in that, and uh, then all you have is the concept here that Joanna Dark is just Sandra Bullock. She was just in Bullet Train, and it's Perfect Dark Zero, where she's come back to, uh, you know, sort of, how do I describe it, like, you know, after a long hiatus, because she's like, you know, older Joanna, and then, you know, I'm a fanna, and she's better than Hannah Montana, and um, she... Yeah, but not better than my Hannah. Yeah, anyways, my, my point is that... Um, it's simple, and she wants. She's concerned about being sexy, so she can do sexy spin kick moves like all those movies, like Eon Flux and stuff. Yeah, I know that wouldn't be nice, cause like, um, there's never enough of the woman spy, not spy, but like action. I don't care about the spying, just the action. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so I now reveal that that Bullet Train movie was in the Marvel Universe because Brad Pitt needs to entertain, to entertain children too. And Sandra Bullock, so she's Joanna Dark. And they're part of, like, the real serious part of the world that's not used to superheroes, you know, but have special abilities, like how he's incredibly lucky. Anyways, but, but only when it comes to saving his life and absolutely nothing else. That's the character. Anyways... So, Joanna Dark um, has to, in the game already, go to Killian's Club, which is the Killian from from the other thing because he's not dead. Uh, you know, the Killian from uh, Iron Man 3. And I don't think it should be exactly the same plot because why would he be people smuggling? You'd have to make it a little bit different. So instead, he's people smuggling to experiment with even hotter serums on. So he's a, uh, you know, not exactly being a good person, but he's not intentionally killing everybody. Well, we can watch. I don't even know what happens in the game, but yeah, it'll guide you. No, my only, my only point is just this, that, you know... Killian is always supposed to be a character because you can't make characters that are always fighting for the future like that without them always technically feeling like to some people they're in the right that are full of like desire to torment people. They just, you have to, like how some people agree with Gore, you know, when he gets corrupted because he wants revenge, you know? Yeah. So there has to be not just fuck Killian because Killian's blonde and I'm blonde and I don't like the association, you cocksucker motherfuckers. Dude, video games are a wealth of good ideas for the movie because like I was watching, she's sneaking towards Killian's club. So you're supposed to sneak up behind the guys in the dark and like smack them on the ass in the game with your gun and then they go all limp and silly and their ass is up in the air. So it like, seems like in the movie it would make sense if she... Like, runs up and, like, smashes some guy on the ass and then his, like, head's near, like, a truck and he, like, slams into it and knocks him out. And then he, like, slumps over slowly and his ass is all up in the air, like in the video game. So, yeah, just copy the video game if you can. It's great. I mean, yeah, wouldn't she... Like, I was watching this game play where the guy's told he isn't supposed to murder everyone, but then he does anyway playing... So then I was like, shouldn't um, she, like, have a fantasy where she goes in hot and heavy and, like, you know, kung fu kicks everyone and shoots them long range instantly while, like, repelling in all this shit? Then it's, you think it's real, and then it flashes back and it's just her imagination and she, you know, doesn't do that. Yeah, and then she just sexy sneaks in instead. Yeah, that. you're right. So you get to the action, but it's just like a montage of her imagining what she did. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Jana Dark is like outside of the club and the fantasy that Eamon says that she would have is she like runs up and there's like crates of like, you know, various stuff that they're unloading from like the back of the, the stupid uh, armored like double door Humvees that are in the, the game. Yeah. And so, you know, she sprints up and like grabs one of the guy from like behind, you know, rubbing his head and slams him into it and then like fires at the other guy who's behind, you know, her and, uh, 
grabs up one of his guns as there's like a uh, door kicked open with a little, you know, set of metal stairs going down to the ground. And two guys come out, and one guy to raise his gun, and she goes, you know, <laughs> and they both go, blah, blah, and, you know, fall down the railing, all, you know, falling over each other. <laughs> Then the main doors of the club get kicked open, and a guy with a chain laser chain gun comes out and goes, <laughs> and she starts sprinting and running, and all the cars start blowing up, you know, and flipping and smashing down. And then she hides behind one of them as he temporarily is like, you know, loading another chain gun, you know, strip into it, and flings a grenade, and then it goes <laughs> in the distance. And then, you know, it's like it fades out through the smoke of her brain. And you know, yeah. Her like, no, that's a terrible idea. She's like on top of a rooftop. Yeah. The steam of one of those vents coming up. You know, yeah. They have that, like, what's, and she's like, that's a bad idea. Yes. And then she sneaks in. Then, of course, the point would be that, like, just like with any movie, you have there be an actual reality check for everybody who, who actually watches movies. So the reality check with this one is the people that he supposedly was trafficking. He's trafficking them, a.k.a. illegally without passports and things, but not actually because that's why she's even there to even see what's going on illegally as in they want to be experimented on even if they're dying painfully because that's the way sick fucks are. Well, I mean, they want to look the part and, like, um, blend in like they're high-class citizens because, see, what happens is the reason you get deported from a country is you don't look good. So then he says, well, I can make you look good and get you into whatever country you want to be in. So then, boom, that's his trafficking. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I was thinking about it, and uh, it's best to keep up the pacing of the movie because it's supposed to be really intense, and I don't really like talking too much. This isn't a James Bond film or anything. There isn't supposed to be very many similarities whatsoever. So um, I would say that Sandra Bullock does half the film, and then the other half of the film can be do done by Lorelai Roaz, uh, Lily, um, I don't I don't. I, I keep thinking her last name is like something common like Rodriguez or something really boring even though she doesn't really look like that type of genetics. But anyway, uh, yeah, she, uh, my girlfriend from New Mexico and then she went to Northern Idaho to college, whatever. Anyways, the point is uh, she can play the other half where she's, you know, like younger Joanna Dark. So then it's like as if like we, we flash forward and we flash backward and both like share the same concept of brain energy. What I mean by that is like both are in the moment and telling uh, separate stories of her existence kind of simultaneously. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's like both stories kind of end at the same time. Like, one mission she was doing when she was older, and then the her younger, you know, like, main mission. Do you want, like, the younger mission to reveal how it's connected to her older, like, as a movie can finishes and stuff? I mean, I, we can probably figure that out. Yeah, that's what I was saying.